So, what do you think of Vasco's special coffee? I'll tell you. No, I'll tell you no. Oh, it's Ooh. sweet. Oh. <laughs> it is sweet. I get him to make these for me all the time. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. I'm with Chris and Henry, my longtime friends. Yep. Uh, also, sometimes my therapist. <laughs> um, and I'm, I've, I suppose, really impressed, by the way, because you own a coffee shop in Northern Ireland, yeah. as well as running a marketing agency and yes. all the other stuff you do. We do. So you to rate his coffee... Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Vasco, right. I know you're in, in the room, so I'm going to say something really nice about your yeah. coffee. It's sweet, just like your personality. It's absolutely stunning. So, just so you're aware, it's he sweet has... like your wife's kiss. <laughs> 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 so, it's really good to have you both over. Yeah. Um, COVID kind of got in the way of us catching up. Yep. I was with you last month. Last month. Um, you did the TED TEDx event in Newton Abbey, New, Newtown, Newton Abbey. Yeah, but everybody thought it was Newton Abbott, so people were like, "Why are you making such a big deal about going to a TED talk and doing a TED talk like ten minutes down the road?" And I was like, and then somebody said, "Hopefully, there's nobody from Newton Abbott <laughs> listening to this." But why would anybody want to do a TEDx event oh, in damn. Newton Abbott? I'm like, no, no, it's a nice place in Northern <laughs> Ireland, so. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Um, curious, 2023, so much doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. What are you guys thinking about 2023? Well, we actually were chatting about this prior to Christmas because it's it's like the doom and gloom is part of our history, 2008. Um, we experienced it probably like yourselves. But because mine, we... Mine was 2018. 2018. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you... Yeah, because we've all been mugged, and the reality is because we've been down these dark alleys, mm -hmm. we know what to expect, and, and we want to pass that experience on to the business owners that we are actually mm -hmm. dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, and we have said a few things to them, be consistent, but be aggressive in 2023, mm -hmm. because the reality is, you know, if you if you go to ground, to probably to ground you will go, <laughs> and so we've been telling them to be motivated, be aggressive, and work on your strategy for 2023 because it is going to be a bumpy ride, but those who ride the storm will come out and see the rainbow. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same with just going into COVID. Um, we sat down with some business owners and they were thinking it's lights out time, that this is it, this yeah. is the end of our business. And for them, we encourage them to pivot and to look at what services that they can kind of mm -hmm. change inside their, their business. And I think from being resilient and it's all about mindset for me whenever we're working with businesses we we encourage them to look after your mindset whenever you're walking in like everyone wants to say that 23 is going to be doom and gloom mm. you have to be cutting back costs watching your energy watching mm. your your staff costs and things like that and for us it's about your mindset and looking for opportunities and for me going into 23 i'm super excited about all the opportunities that yeah. we mm. can see and some of the advances, even what we were chatting about earlier with, with AI, some of the things that are on the horizon for every business, not just our business as marketers, mm. but for mm. every business, there's so much that you can do. Mm. I just reminded, Chris, as we were walking into the studio, you were following me behind, turning off the heaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So we're, we're dialing on the energy yeah. costs. Yeah. When, when, when we have an, an old building now, which has fires, oil, heating, in fact, with two system, two oil heating systems, and uh, we're like the old man going around yeah. turning it switches off. Built before the Titanic was built, so the, this yeah. thing has no cavity walls. It is the coldest building. <laughs> and the ceiling in there, when I was over there, the ceiling is incredible. And yeah. it, and I walked in and I was like, this looks like a ceiling off the Titanic. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally the, the craftsman that built the Titanic built part of our our agency so yeah. it's it's a fantastic building to work in but it's so cold in winter and speaking yeah. of the coffee shop is it above water do you see what i did there <laughs> <laughs> yeah well the, I, I, it is it was a lifelong dream it was henry and myself have been working for 27 years together mm. probably the last 15 it's been a, almost like the conversation that we had every single coffee shop we went to meet clients in we would say we could do this we could have a, an agency with a coffee shop underneath how cool would it be how amazing would it be and we're six, seven months into yeah. having the, the coffee shop and it 
it has taken up so much mind time and so much energy to, to mm -hmm. get to where it is but we are starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel yeah and see that we can actually make a, a really good go of it and it complements so much of what we do as an agency because we're that kind of like niche it's kind of handy having a, co a coffee shop with a marketing it's department basically isn't yeah. it very much so and some of our rooms we've obviously got a, a studio like the, the the one you have here but it's it's leaning itself to so many other things. Obviously, we, we are very blessed of how we work the coffee shop, but, but mm -hmm. now we're seeing, we're doing training sessions for mobile phones and we're looking to do some niche network events, marketing events, and the, the building allows, the, sh the way the, the building's shaped um, is allowing us to do things we've never ever done before. As one of the things that Christopher said there, we actually looked at this building seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm and said if there was ever a building where we could do what the vision, and this is where positioning mm -hmm. happens, and where, what was it, the uh, luck and hard work meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what the pandemic, because probably like your own agency, um, it, back in 2018, you were wondering, 2019, you were wondering, what do we do? You you I, we, you were sitting in your kitchen. I'm sitting in my <laughs> kitchen, going, "What the heck do we do?" But we went to work and we said, "Look, that's get aggressive." And it's the same message mm -hmm. today. But we're in a fantastic building, and we're we're excited about 2023. Yeah, it's amazing, Dean. Actually, walking around what you've built here. The last time we were oh, here, yeah. it was half the size. You'd probably half the amount of staff. It's such a huge operation you're running now and to see that you've done the same over over the last time we've we've met that you've pivoted some of the business here from mm -hmm. what you were as an mm -hmm. agency and and you're now doing the linkedin training mm -hmm. and what's what's kind of exciting for you then if if you're looking at the 23 <sighs> oh right i nearly swore then um for me it's all we're zeroing in more on why do we exist why does Maverick exist? Yeah. I think the pandemic, because obviously we were doing like loads of events, in-person events, and then suddenly this all shuts down. Mm -hmm. You pivot, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you do what you need to do to, to make bank and do all of that mm -hmm. stuff. And we opened a bit of our business that didn't exist. We had the kind of agency. If you remember, 2018, yeah. it was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. It's too much hard work. There's too much anxiety, stress, angst, the works. And then we were forced to go back to it because we can't go see people anymore. We're all mm -hmm. locked in our houses. That's right. So we did that. And then, you know, that got bigger and bigger. Uh, we got more corporate work, corporate consulting work all the way through the pandemic. And then we got to the end of 2022, kind of the second half of 2022 and I don't know if it's politically correct, but the pandemic was over. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, COVID's still here, but the pandemic was over. Yeah. And it was like, get on with it. And you can't, we kind of like felt, who are we anymore? Mm -hmm. We need to really kind of figure out that. And so we really kind of went back to what's our mission as a business? And it is this, uh, we coined a phrase for four years ago. And we've kind of updated it. So our mission as a business was help 1 million businesses grow their revenue margin and profit. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Right. And then we came back to it and went, do you know what? That's what we've got to be about because we can lose ourselves in chasing money. What are we really about? And we refined it to, we want to help 1 million businesses get clients, grow faster and spend less time selling. Mm -hmm. And so everything that we're doing now is Excellent. kind of like refocused around that. How do we give as much value for free to as many people as possible? And that in turn gives us like people come and say, I need more help. Mm -hmm. I need, uh, can you come into our company? Mm -hmm. Can you do? Uh, and it's not something new, but we're just really focused on making that clear and going after it kind of relentlessly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think, it, it, as you said, it, it, a lot of the, the, the free stuff, and I think, what you guys are about is very, very similar to what we are about is that you want to help businesses grow because until you've been that guy, it's like back in 2016, mm -hmm. 17, when you were sitting with staff, a new building signed up and lease, until you've a, had that pain. A fraction of the size of this. A mm -hmm. fraction of the size. 
And I think you had, what, maybe 15, 11 to 15 staff or whatever yep. in the round yep. that time. And you had a, a rake of debt and a lot of your business was moving away, let's say. Very without, diplomatically <laughs> put. Yeah, without <laughs> mentioning names or personnel. And I remember having a conversation with you and you were in France. Yeah. And I was in my wee tin bunker at, in my, my, my old home. And I, I remember chatting and I, I was trying to pick up where do you go from here? And I remember you, you saying a, a term to me, says, Henry, what I'm doing, I'm coming and I'm focusing and I'm kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to kick it down until I get this thing to work. Yeah. And I we, we were so um, taken back about your passion because you knew that, and this is a part of your remit now, is that you didn't want to let the people do go because mm -hmm. you, you know yourself, these people with mortgages, with cars and stuff like that. And you said, honey, I felt a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And in many ways that when you've been that guy, we were we were the same back in 2000 and yet through 2000, because we had to reshape ourselves. 70% mm -hmm. of our market was down. It's, it's like probably like fly being Belfast, where 80%, 85% of the flights going out of Belfast City Airport was through one company. Mm -hmm. So that was a massive mistake. We also made a, a, I hold myself accountable for that. But then you come coming out the other side, you start to realize that when you've been down that entry, 2023, you can you can now see mm -hmm. what Christopher says earlier, there's multiple opportunities, but it's about, as what he also said, it's about the mindset, about the mindset back when you had 300 grand in debt and 11 to 15 staff, a 25 grand lease, and you're going, what on earth do I do? Mm -hmm. But you're sitting here with double, triple the size of the building, Double over double the staff, I believe. Scary. <laughs> and it don't frighten me down. <laughs> Friday comes at the same time every week. Um, and everybody needs to be paid. And But that teaches you something. But I think organically, and we've tried to do this, is we're trying to bring businesses as well. Mm -hmm. Because we don't see ourselves just as build, business builders for other people. We want to build people. Mm -hmm. Because they, like ourselves, you have a family, we have families. And until you've felt that um, hot air on your face and you're going... We need to fight tooth and nail. And that's taught us a lot when we are actually negotiating with our own clients. We want to take them. What Tell us what the next two or three, five years look like mm -hmm. and let us help you get there. You know, um, what's interesting about what you say there is, like, I think there is this tendency that when things are going well, we kind of take our foot off the gas. The gas. Yeah. And you know, we, we all know, because we're in the marketing world, mm -hmm. that, pretty much all of your marketing has a lag. Yeah. So whatever you're doing right now is going to pay off somewhere, somewhere down the road. Yeah. And so if you're Mr. Solopreneur or Miss Solopreneur, um, you kind of like go, I'm really busy. This is great. You get your head into the work and then suddenly you complete all the work and go, now I need new clients. Mm. You've kind of burnt through your marketing mm. time. That's right. And when you talked about kicking it down the road. Mm. I was like, I know that this is, despite my struggle to educate other people, that this lag thing exists. Yeah. And and you're reaping what you sowed, whether it's a month ago, three months ago, yeah. whatever it is. Everybody wants to reap and sow on the same day, mm -hmm. but we know that's not how it <laughs> works. <laughs> but when I was in that conversation in France, I just had that news about the bank account so business split was happening. Business partner rang the bank and said, I don't want to be on this. And the bank just froze the account two days mm. before payday. Mm. Whether it was malicious, incompetence on the bank, you don't know. So I'm in France talking to you. And I'm like, I just need to buy time. That's right. To market myself, get myself into a position and, and everything straightens itself out. Mm. But I need the time. So that was the kind of jiggery pokery phase that you had to go through but when i was doing that i was like i've got to go nuts on linkedin yeah. i've got to go nuts on all marketing on all fronts to kind of you know that analogy of um is it a frog or something in cream or milk or what what is it you know churn, churn yeah <laughs> yeah you have to yeah do some stuff to get yeah. things going but then I knew, I said, if I don't want to be in this place again, mm. I have to l run like that. Mm. And I've had people come in here and it is crazy and it does occupy 
a lot of my life. Yeah. But I'm doing stuff every single day. Mm-hmm. And somebody said to me, they, they run a 10, a 10 million pound business in London, similar staff count to us, obviously way more revenue than us. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said, you're doing more marketing than us. Mm. Uh, and he said, you're massively over marketing. Why don't you ease back? And I was like, no, mm. because we're never going to have the problem <clears throat> of Ooh, crunch time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I determined my, I made a decision to myself. We will always market more than we need mm-hmm. for longer than we need. So we yeah. don't have that pinch point ever again. Yeah. Do you think companies get that? Well, we have had companies who have came on from zero, went to hero, loads of orders, doing really well, and then felt, oh, we've, we've kind of peaked and we've got all the maximum we've exposure and dropped us, disappeared, and we, we go, the, you're busy now, but you might be busy in six months' time or yeah. nine months' time. And kind of all our market and kind of like it, it ebbs past the part where they leave us and then it kind of dissipates over time. And then you look at maybe that same company maybe a year later and you see the, uh, you can mm-hmm. actually see the tangible difference that yeah. they were maybe getting so many uh, post likes or, or comments or engagement and they've dropped off the face of the planet. And it's the same with their, their actual business as well, their business declines as well. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's that kind of mindset is that people feel that, yes, you get busy and you have these huge big peaks but it's it's what you're doing in the background and what you're building the whole time. And if you're not doing that, it's the same even for our own business is that every time I scroll through like LinkedIn or TikTok, you're there. I see your face all the time now, so mm, which is impressive. <laughs> it actually is impressive. <laughs> and I, I scroll down and I go, why is, is this guy fighting all this time to publish on all these, these yeah. channels? And I get it. You're probably repurposing like maybe some of these podcasts yeah. posted as well. And you're clever with maybe some of your, your previous content and recycling yeah. as well. But for me, it's the the conscious effort to be present, to turn up every day, yeah. to be consistent, and not to fall off the face of the planet is so important. And, and you know what? I started my, I restarted my Instagram. You you'll know my longer history, mm-hmm. and the previous, if you can call it an industry, <laughs> but the previous industry I was in. So a lot of my audience pre Maverick mm-hmm. was totally irrelevant. Mm. So I've had this Instagram. Mm-hmm. I've had Twitter for like ever and now i switch from a very niche industry Mm -hmm. um to something that's more widely known Mm -hmm. and so i've got followers on there that are totally irrelevant to me and i'm like so i restart my instagram uh from scratch Mm -hmm. it's really hard to get go you like to make anything work you have to throw an inordinate amount of energy in till it catches and then it's suddenly like, oh, this mm-hmm. is easy now. Well, it's not. You've broke the back of it. You've broke yeah. the back of the hurdle. My other word. Starts. But I started my Instagram from scratch, and people go, hmm. Um, seems a lot of work, Dean, for for not a lot there yeah. compared to your LinkedIn. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but just watch this Instagram in three, four years' time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking now about LinkedIn's there, great, but I'm now spending a time on YouTube, Mm-hmm. Twitter, TikTok, all of these others every single freaking day mm-hmm. because I know that I need these other channels. Yeah. yeah. But I've done it and and this is where I think some people make mistakes. And I'd love to hear what you've got to say on this. They kind of go on everything mm-hmm. but go really shallow and thin. Mm-hmm. Just slap everything up mm-hmm. and get nowhere. What I did with LinkedIn is I really went into it like like down the rabbit hole into it got it going and Mm. now i'm i'm pivoting off of linkedin into other channels Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people don't get that if you go that deep on a channel you can actually make it really perform like like Mm -hmm. multi-million revenue or from organic social media or just using one channel Mm -hmm. and they spread themselves too thin what do you reckon well for us an example would be our coffee shop that we knew the coffee shops thrive from TikTok and Instagram. They're mm-hmm. probably the two kind of the, the, the hip kind of channels to use. Yeah. So you're not going to fill your coffee shop with LinkedIn uh, views. So we started using uh, LinkedIn primarily, or sorry, Instagram primarily, and we started using that. 
posting nice looking content, but content alone is not going to get you anywhere. It's, it's all the actual sweat work of the, the DMs, the mm. comments, yeah. the replies, the, the liking, the following, mm. and all that is, is intensive work. Mm. And it's the same on any platform, in, including LinkedIn, that you're spending so much time in the kind of sweat work stage of, of building your network. See, see, I don't think people get why, like, if you reply to a comment, mm -hmm. if you engage, people go, oh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. But it actually makes, in the long run, it's probably the easiest way to build your channel. 100%, yeah. Well, so, even just today, even just to LinkedIn, obviously you know, we're, we have B2B and B2C clients on LinkedIn today alone, you know, just, just sitting, getting a couple of minutes. Outside of, out of outside of posting today, I'm wishing people congratulations on your work anniversary. Happy birthday. Send a little um, yeah, encouragement. Work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and people think, oh, you need all this time. You're on um you're you're never off social media. I'm going, no, I'm not. I'm just taking mm -hmm. I'm actually trying to build people up. Mm -hmm. And you, I think sometimes you have to look at it. If someone's birthday on whether it's Facebook or or um LinkedIn. You know, we all get the notifications. LinkedIn mm. make it very, very easy for you to send a message. <laughs> they write the message out for you. <laughs> My goodness. You could send three happy birthdays and great posts. Mm. 30 seconds where thanks you can put great posts or thanks for sharing. <laughs> Love you. Um, and you're congratulating. And LinkedIn, as we all know, that people say thank you. Mm -hmm. Facebook, they, they couldn't give a rat's. <laughs> but um, LinkedIn, they're compelled. There's, there's a certain uh, demographic on there and they come back and go thank you. Tell you a funny story. When we um, we went out for our Christmas dinner, and this is probably where the lurkers come in. And um, is this the fight you broke up, or is this no? This is the, both the fight. <laughs> and our the Christmas dinners well, back in Ireland are pretty. Yeah, solid. <laughs> I, I went into the cloth here in Belfast. But the boys, I was meeting the boys down, and I went down a wee bit early um, just to get a couple of minutes to myself, um, thinking I was going to have a, a quad drink in in a, a Christmas time. Go figure. And this guy went to the bar and this guy said to me, I know you. You me, do you? It's, you're on LinkedIn. <laughs> Stephen, here's me, notes Henry. Henry McCrory. So that was okay. Stephen's so, and I go on, had a fantastic conversation. I love what you guys are doing. Who's your uh, your business partner now? He says, Christopher. That's right, Christopher. He knew us. Hmm. And it was a great conversation. 10 or 15 minutes. He was a wee bit rightly. Um, but that was okay. So we went out for the night. Went to the merchant, finished the night off the merchant. I goes out to get a taxi home, standing, um, two guys fighting, handbags throwing each other over the taxi cab. I broke the fight up. Come on, boys, we've had a great night. Knock it in the head. Please go home, go home, go home. The guy looks at me and says, I know you from LinkedIn. <laughs> 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 it was more handbags than a fight, to be honest. But, but it shows you, I never met these guys before in my life. But again, the visibility gave you a bit of credibility, which mm -hmm. led you a conversation. Mm -hmm. Two business owners, have they contacted me since? Did the guy thank me for breaking the fight up? No, but we had a conversation. And these are the things that people don't see, mm -hmm. but that's through the sweat work. Yeah. See, I was, in, I was over with you for the TED thing, yeah. and somebody walked up to me, shook my hands. I had no idea who the person was, because mm -hmm. um, none of us looked like our real LinkedIn profile <laughs> no. pictures anyway, <laughs> right? But... Um, um, shook my hands and said, and then they said the name. I, went, I know you. I know your name. Mark McAvoy was it? No, it was uh, Collie Graham. Collie Graham. That's yeah. right. I'd never met the guy in person, mm. but then he walked past me, said hello, and I was like, oh, I know you now. And I think, I think that bit of social media is is missing because we don't yeah. see an instant kind of like response or That's instant it. return. Mm -hmm. We dismiss it. But if you think about it, it's a bit like Coke. Not not the powder, the drink, <laughs> right? <Okay. laughs> imagine, imagine Coca Cola stops all advertising, the works, mm -hmm. right? Would that hurt them in twenty twenty three? A little bit, mm -hmm. maybe. Pepsi might edge a little bit more. Twenty twenty four, they'd probably start to feel it a bit, but because their visibility has been so high, so consistent yeah. for so long, that residual effect. Mm -hmm. The lag is still paying off for them. Mm -hmm. We, you know, somebody posting on Instagram or Twitter right now might be going, what's the point? But you don't know what's bubbling away yeah. with those, as we call them, lurkers. Mm -hmm. 
That's and right. just on that engagement, because obviously like, my Twitter's full of uh, people from my old world. Mm -hmm. So I, so I'm now doing a lot of business content. I left it alone for years and then a lot of business content now. And I've started to outbound engage with people to kind of, you know, um, uh, fire it up a little bit. And, yeah. and, and uh, this is really embarrassing, right? I did a tweet and and it's getting better now but my first tweet after starting it again properly like consistently mm -hmm. i got 24 impressions <laughs> right i don't feel it, um if that happened to me on linkedin i'd be on a ledge <laughs> 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 right 24 yeah. started to outbound engage with like four or five people and not big accounts just people with like 200 followers and whatever mm -hmm. i'm getting 54 64 200 500 mm -hmm. because some of those people are almost coming back and yeah. liking my stuff almost out of appreciation mm -hmm. for me putting in time with them and i guess that's what you did to get your instagram going for the coffee shop right mm -hmm. yeah and for us it's <clears throat> I, I actually remember the early days before we'd even opened a coffee shop we were posting every single day and i actually had a comment from someone mm -hmm. saying stop posting every day yeah, why are you it. posting updates about your coffee shop that it's not open and i knew because it's a long game you have to post every mm -hmm. single day turn up be consistent and today again we'll, we'll post more content again and i know that if we turn that off our coffee shop is driven not not completely by social media but a lot of people travel to us from mm -hmm. other places because of the social and the remark on it all the time that it's it's good and it's strong and the creative's nice and it's it's, it's as good as any other coffee shop would be the but, best. but because of the <laughs> because of the the traffic and the traction that we have it brings people in and we can rely on that. But the minute I stop that and, and we turn that off and, and we yeah. stop doing it, so we're not Coca-Cola, so mm -hmm. our your, decimation your residual is going to be a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. I suppose if, if Maverick stopped mm -hmm. doing what it was doing, that that kind of effect would drop mm -hmm. much faster than, say, Coke, who's got years of this in the, behind them. Yeah. So we have um, maybe five different coffee shops in the same town that we're in, mm. and maybe one or two of them post maybe once a week, maybe maybe twice a week at, at best. Maybe whenever they see that maybe their com competitors doing better than them, and uh, for us, we would want everyone in the in the town to be posting as much as we are because it will bring yeah. more traffic and it'll be the ultimate kind of like heart that we would have for the town. But the minute that we stop, we would be very much like those other coffee shops. They're all offering coffee. They're all doing the exact mm -hmm. same service. They've maybe nice, friendly staff there and they've nice food. And there's not really a, a huge, big difference between what we're doing and what they're doing, other than that we're, top we're of visible mind. and we're turning yeah. up. Yeah. You're, you're more top of mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's it. And just in light of what you're saying there, just about, about Twitter, and I think a lot of guys don't, probably realize this either there's different bait for different platforms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know there's different personalities different uh social groupings and depending on what your offering is sometimes i think people forget you have to tweak it a wee bit here mm -hmm. and there for yeah. the audience um because not everybody's going to not, not everybody's going to on linkedin is going to you aren't going to use the same bait for and say instagram and stuff like that because the guys have put up a lovely story there the other day for a father and son mm -hmm. he's actually our chef and uh, actually Vasco made a, a, a comment about the beautiful images. And that's what I think a lot of times what we need to really take on board is that the different different bait for different platforms will catch different fish. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something we obviously, would, I think is very, very important in regards to the different platforms. Yeah, so talking about different platforms, here's a question for you. So I, I was sitting beside my daughter the other day in, right. in the house. And she was scrolling down through TikTok because they're TikTok, they're kids. And I heard your voice on her phone and I went, that sounds like Dean Seddon. And I looked over and I says, who's that? And she went, that's Dean. And I says, <laughs> how are you following Dean? And then I was trying to work out, is it the algorithm knows that I'm her dad and yeah. she's connected and it's throwing your content up and she's maybe followed you. And it, it blew my mind that she was turning, that you were turning up on her phone. Do, <laughs> you, know, do you know what? I think anybody who t who knows or tells you they know how TikTok works <laughs> is lying. <laughs> it's a black art. 
I've got this video, right? Mm -hmm. It's still going now. I've got 1.5 million views, 77,000 shares, right? It's ballistic. I get comments every single day. It's been going for about a month and a half, Mm. right? Just ballistic. What's it about? It has to be said. It's about, actually, it's about how people think that your credentials, your knowledge will Mm -hmm. get you business or will get you opportunity. It's very often, it's not the knowledge, it's the way you present it, it's who you are, it's Mm -hmm. what you're about. So it's very personal brandy. And I I say, your personality will get you further than your intellect, right? Yeah, that's that's it. And the amount of people who've commented saying, tell Mark Zuckerberg that, (laughs) (laughs) right? (laughs) But he has... Mm -hmm obviously convinced people that he had an answer Mm -hmm. when you go to you know he went to silicon valley to get money right he had to convince them not only of the business plan he had to convince them that he was the person because if you're not the right person people will like distrust any piece of paper Mm -hmm. and then people referred like software developers and it's still going next post 300 (laughs) how does that work right if I do that on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. I just, I, before Christmas, I had a post that did 1.2 million on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Every post for the last couple of weeks has been gold, like mm-hmm. literally. Mm-hmm. I put a video up, it's 150,000 impressions. Mm-hmm. There's a bounce on some platforms because you've done well on another post. Now it fades, mm-hmm. but there is this bounce. TikTok, I cannot work out where this comes from. Mm-hmm. And now, of course, you can do all the hooks and all that kind of stuff and the high, high production. But everybody, everybody's account that I've seen that has done well, what I've seen is they take a video that's done well so that by magic, mm-hmm. a video does well. The TikTok algorithm, aka magic, look, whatever we want to call yeah. it, right? What they tend to do then is, is almost redo that video a couple of times. Mm. And then they get into this place where everything starts to catch fire. But I thought it would be, okay. it's one video mm-hmm. and that makes it all work. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to kind of do it a couple of times mm-hmm. uh, to really get it to fly. And I've seen a few people talk about that. And then once you've got it, you've kind of got it. Mm-hmm. It's yours to mess up. Yeah. But um, yeah, mine's so unpredictable. Like 1.5 million, 300, mm-hmm. 20,000. 4,000. It's all over the place. Mm-hmm. But that's indicative of, of life and business, though. I think at, at times, I, I think that's where your level of consistency will determine what your, your success or I was actually listening to someone the other day and they were saying the, the level of hard conversations that you are, you, you can actually face and overcome will determine the success. Mm-hmm. And again, but, but they also went on to say the more, the level and the amount of conversations will determine because that you're facing it over and over and over is that you we always every one of us have had a a post that's flu mm-hmm. and then the next day you <laughs> who you went from mm-hmm. hero to zero but the level of consistency is something that's mm-hmm. taken you from 2016 17 where you you used the term i am committing to this mm-hmm. and that that is the thing that's that's turned this this baby around because i was in here before you actually we were both in here before or yeah before you I came in at, at looking around this build yeah. well, not the the other side that's right when we were taking it and it was yeah. like that's that's w- was it cleared out or was it still like full it of kitchens? A shell it was just a shell yeah it was a shell um there was obviously there was no hole kick through to the, to the side of the the, mm. the the building so but even at that at 25 grand and that's when we all thought we were all going to take over the world <laughs> <laughs> well you did <laughs> well, your ex-business partner did and <laughs> and the reality is it all went to hell in the handbasket but again i remember sitting t- chatting to you at that particular time consistency because we chris said this earlier on we've had clients and i've actually take his conversation more People have fall fell off the the face of the earth because they've stopped. They they got enough business out of us, mm. and then they just. And I was actually chatting to another guy who knows us because Belfast is not a it's a lovely city, but it's not a big city. Mm. And they had noticed that this person was batting at a fairly high level, and I got it was a potential client. And I said, "Well, I, I see you do this person's client says, yeah, uh, we stopped a month ago working with them." I said. 
I have noticed <laughs> that they've disappeared right enough now yeah. that you say. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it might have taken them in two or three months to realize that this person has fell off the face mm -hmm. of the face of the earth. But again, it's coming back to the consistency. Mm -hmm. Back in 2016, 17, in this building before um, Maverick really, well, before Maverick actually came into existence, you said, look, we are going to post every single day. And that's what we actually took that on as a, mm -hmm. Um, as a, a mandate for our own business at that particular time, but we were going to post every single day. And look at the success I'm having now. I'm splitting drunks up in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> People know me, I don't know, and never give me a button of business, but I say here or there. But again, it's the consistency that will that will win through. Mm -hmm. You know what's what's interesting as well is as you start to, and I've no I've noticed this. As you start to really throw yourself into something, I don't know, how do I say this? Too many people have got too, me too much of their attention on their plan B mm -hmm. and not enough attention on their yeah. plan A. We all need like backups and what ifs and how do we manage risk. I'm not saying we just, yeah. but sometimes what happens is we have too much of an eye on our plan B. We don't actually... We commit with our words, but we don't commit with our heart and our attention to right. plan A. And I was like, we're going to do this. We're going to bash this out. We're going to mm. massively build our awareness. And that will be for phase one. Let everybody know who we are, what we do, give tons of value away, mm. and, and just keep doing that as much as we can, way more than we need, or way more than we hope to return, get as a return. And as you go through it, and as you start to grow, and this is a, for anything, what was a peak becomes normal. Yeah. Yeah. So I can remember like four or five years ago, if I got 5,000 views on a post, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going viral. <laughs> <laughs> My world's going to change. <laughs> I can retire now. <laughs> but if I get 5,000 views now, it's like, ooh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean and it's like loser <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll quit <laughs> um, we we kind of go through the life where in all different ways where we fail to see that our ceiling has become a floor yeah that's right so the bit that was the limit on us has now become the platform we stand on yeah and I, I think a lot of people miss this with social media is that because sometimes the growth is so hidden mm -hmm. because it's not like, oh, wow, we've just put a million pounds worth of sales on mm -hmm. overnight. It's just like chugging away in the background, slowly going up and you don't realize, oh, actually, I've just built my business yeah. off posting on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, This kind of gradual thing people underestimate. There's, again, it, 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 I actually, someone, I was at a party on Old Year's Night and a friend of mine's wife. Did you break up another fight? I did, no, I didn't. <laughs> friend of mine's wife, um, she wants to take on the social media side of her business. And she says to me, she pointed at me, says, I want you to teach me how to m market myself online. And I said to her, first and foremost, it's hard work. It's not me posting up a couple of nice photographs or whatever and quotes and blah, blah, blah. You have to engage, you have to engage, you have to engage. I always treat my digital relationships like my physical ones. I talk to them mm -hmm. like real people. They're not um, digital nomads. They're real people. And the, the more you engage with that individual on a consistent basis, the minute we have a conversation with someone online, then we have it in the physical because it, somewhere along the line, if you're consistent enough, people want to be around people who are of people of influence and they want to be added value to. More often than not, we'll get business. Mm -hmm. Purely because we've treated the physical relationship and we've transferred that onto the digital platform and it comes back in the physical form and business happens. And the thing is, if, if you're consistently showing up and consistently interacting with people, that does build like a level of trust, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It might not be the same as, but if, if they know, oh, I've known Henry, he's been around for a while, mm -hmm. it's different to you getting like a message from a complete stranger saying, hey, do you need this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you could kind of it, it separates you a little bit. Yeah, well, for twenty seven years we've built our agency on pretty looking video, pretty looking designs, brochures, branding, all that kind of like tangible stuff. And we've always felt that's what's going to get people sales. That's what's going to drive uh, food fall through businesses. Mm -hmm. And it's only been maybe in the last kind of 10, 15 years that we've started to see that social media is more about the social side of it and mm -hmm. less about the actual creative that, that's involved in it. So for us, you can make really, really nice looking uh, creative and a fantastic photography and it'll, it'll tank, it'll get nowhere. It's mm -hmm. the actual, it's the the behind the scenes stuff that, mm. that really matters so for us it's finding the right demographic putting it out at the right time reaching out and being meaningful with mm. with your communication with them as well i did um a podcast with um head of global head of social media and influencers for uber huh? uh, a couple of weeks back um it's coming out soon and one of the things suzanne was saying was as a team their content needs to be scrappy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what she meant by that is sometimes the stuff that looks really polished mm -hmm. can actually not work that well. Mm -hmm. And it's unsustainable to have everything as Hollywood quality yeah. that's right. and keep up with the output that's needed to be consistent. She said what they do now is they have these big kind of pieces mm -hmm. that might be more long long-term content that they will invest time and money and you know get all the stuff in stuff that they know can really last yeah. and and endure but then some of their day-to-day -day stuff will be quick simple stuff that mm -hmm. they can put out um so you know like for an example this episode as a podcast will sit on the internet for as long as the internet exists, probably, or as long as we exist, yeah. you know. Well after Vasco dies. <laughs> well, well after Vasco <laughs> dies. Um, but the podcast itself will mm. endure. Okay. But when we cut this up into little sound bites, mm -hmm. we'll send some to you that you can use on your social media. Mm -hmm. um, those become things that are day-to-day, -day, what we class as scrappy content, cut yeah. up, ready to go out. And if you look on TikTok... You you know uh, Ryanair. You know you yeah. see some of their stuff and you go. It's savage looking, but it's, I could make yeah, some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's not hard to make, yeah. and I think that's the thing is invest quality into the stuff that will endure. Yeah. So if you make a good TV commercial, mm -hmm. uh, that can last for a long time. But if you need stuff day to day, I'm not saying it has to. It ca kind of amateurish, but it has to be mm -hmm. a volume thing. You well, need so many agencies now are doing UGC for they actually have a department that's it's made to look like it's made by other users and for for me that's that's actually something that we're very interested in producing now. So for years we looked at how do we get the best cameras, how do mm -hmm. we get the best lenses, the yeah. best editing software, the the best designers, and make things look as polished as we can make them. And now we're thinking, well, how do we bring other people in that can make user-generated content that, that actually looks authentic and, and real and the scrappy stuff actually can perform way 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 better definitely mm -hmm. we would always say because we would we would uh, post content up for our clients three times a week they would always say will i stop posting and what mm -hmm. do we say yeah for the post in between and make sure so uh, ideally we want all our clients posting once per day on mm -hmm. on yeah. all platforms and they they feel that maybe just us doing those kind of three nice looking branded content yeah. pieces that that's enough, but it, it yeah. needs to be the UGC type of stuff that yeah. that looks because you can get intimidated by the good stuff, mm -hmm. and it, which yeah. you say, well, I I can't put that up after say one of our videos or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, you have to. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to. You have to put because that is authentically you. Mm -hmm. We are putting the polished stuff out to represent the brand and the corporate yeah. image and all the rest. Of it. You are the real people on the ground with the real message. And we're just taking your real message and I'm making it probably look a bit prettier. And that that's the problem is that there's an inner conflict within us, isn't it? We want it to be the best. Yeah. But actually, if you tried to do your best content every single day, like that's impossible. Yeah. It's unsustainable. You yeah. need a massive budget to do that. That's right. Get some really good stuff that you can put out consistently, mm -hmm. but maybe not every day, really good stuff. And then go, right, how do I put something that really 
you know, I've seen some of the big brands on TikTok and stuff like that. Some of their stuff is like, it's funny. It's mm. it's not it's not overly branded, and that's the other point. Mm -hmm. I find now more when I see really slick stuff, it either has to really entertain me and engage me, mm -hmm. or I think it's an ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that would be fair, but again, it, it's coming back to what you had said earlier on: is is some of that demonly scrappy stuff um, needs to be mixed in and around. Yeah. Because you're bringing the real culture of the business to the party, and we are bringing maybe it could be deemed as an ad. Mm -hmm. um, you, because you do need you do like on your website you wouldn't have TikToks of you going hi, you know. But it's all in. Co <laughs> <laughs> it's actually I think I've got that on mine. I've just got a new <laughs> no. I'm I'm behaving myself on that video. But no, you you've got to have some content which is like your professional. It's showing your expertise mm -hmm. and that stuff. But actually, your day to day social media day to day social media content needs to be stuff that you can easily put mm -hmm. out. Mm. Yeah, so like maybe on LinkedIn with your featured videos, they're the maybe the yeah. more polished stuff. But then on your day to days, the behind the scenes inside yeah. a studio, or uh, and I say to people, you should have at least you know one out of five posts should be overtly promotional. Mm -hmm. No more, because then you turn it into like a marketing propagandist. Yeah. <laughs> but you are going to put some effort into that one mm -hmm. promotional post where it's like it's slick, it's well presented. Why? Because you want to give people confidence to buy something. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so you do need that element. But yeah, I find as soon as you start trying to create the best content, it gets bigger, mm -hmm. more unmanageable, more complex, more expensive. Yeah. So um, there is a balance to strike mm -hmm. between having that volume of output and not quality, maybe production quality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the right word? For... I'm good with that, yeah. Production quality, not quality of the, the, the content itself, what's yeah. in it, but maybe this is Hollywood mm -hmm. and this is like... Yeah. Pinewood or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most important thing to me whenever I'm watching anything is going to be the sound quality. So as soon as I watch, I'll suffer bad video, but I won't suffer bad sound. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're going to use bad sound, then try and up that production first. Make yeah. that one of your first protocols. Um, for us this year, we're looking at TikTok more than ever. We're going to be wanting to pivot a lot of our clients into TikTok. Mm. You're already on TikTok and you're kind of prolific on it. So what's what's kind of like the future for for Maverick with with TikTok and? Uh, so we've got a full time member of staff who's joined us, mm -hmm. who is going to be running our TikTok. Mm -hmm. They, in their own right, have a significant TikTok following. Okay, well, that's interesting <laughs> because I was going to ask, what's the criteria for you to hire someone who is going to be in charge of TikTok? Are they going to be pro prolific on it themselves to begin with? or For me, it has to be somebody who understands or has used the platform mm -hmm. and had some degree of success. Now, the downside is in any kind of TikTok scenario, um, what we do is filling a very tiny... Um, or section of the audience of TikTok. So we're never going to get on every video, mm. you know, ba bazillions of views unless mm -hmm. we don't go really down the comedy route and, you know, entertainment route. And mm -hmm. we're debating that at the moment. If you're, if you're in food mm -hmm. or stuff like that, stuff that has broad mass appeal, mm -hmm. which is where she's come from. She's come from uh, the makeup world. So she's got, yeah. you know, all of that kind of, it's, it's really easy I'm not diminishing her, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a, you've got 50% yeah, of the planet yeah. Yeah. kind of interested in that. Um, so we, we've done that to really go in on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to kind of nail TikTok, not necessarily as we're going to show you how to build a business on TikTok, mm -hmm. um, because I think the it's, TikTok's still evolving and adapting and it's still a little bit like Facebook in 2006. Mm -hmm at the moment um so it's not kind of reached that point where it's it's predictable for mm -hmm. everybody you know yeah. if you're a small business and you go on there and you get 50 views and people say oh better hooks and better this and better that yeah. there's so many conflicting opinions there's no mm -hmm. level at the moment so we're not i'm not going to do 
do funny dances. I've tried that. If you go back through my TikTok, oh, you go it. to the beginning. We will go back. <laughs> There's actually we me. We will go back. We've got the time and, and the energy. <laughs> uh, and you know what? When I, I started doing them, because I thought, this is what it's about, right? And and then I started to do them and realized, one, I can't dance, right? I can't <laughs> hold rhythm uh, at all. And then I thought, well, should I get a coach and help me do this? But, you're not like, making this any more appealing no, to search no. for. <laughs> and do you know no. what? Do you know what? I come to the conclusion, if if TikTok's all about dancing, I'm not doing it. And I came, dropped off it. And then I went, do you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to put videos up of little bits of tips mm. and things like that. Do they get, am I happy with where I'm getting views? The consistency of the views? Not really. Mm -hmm. But um, do you know what it is really weird, right? I don't know why this is a thing. And I shouldn't really say this, but I'm going to tell you this, right? People say, I love watching your podcast clips. You know, like like this, I'm mm -hmm. talking to you guys, yeah. the camera's over here somewhere, yeah. right? And of course, I don't often get lots of people in to do them. So mm. I'm doing a lot of them on video calls. Mm -hmm. So the problem with video calls is you're face to face. You're yeah. looking at each other. Yeah. So I found this weird thing where if I talk to the camera, mm -hmm on a video, it does worse than talking where the camera's looking at me talking to you. Mm -hmm. So when I found a good line in a podcast, this is really embarrassing, right? When I found a good line in a podcast, I've basically noted down what I said, yeah. turned myself this way <laughs> and, said, <laughs> wow. and said it again. <laughs> anyway, Terry's wife, found me on tiktok and she said who was dean on this podcast with <laughs> no one it's a so really fun. good idea what he's just said then <laughs> and i thought thanks terry's wife for watching my tiktoks i hope she liked commented and saved um <laughs> but then terry went, he's talking to nobody <laughs> that's impressive <laughs> and you know what commitment. loads of people do that so why do you think that is why do you th is it eye contact because maybe so many people film content themselves with a phone looking at themselves and maybe we're fatigued with that? Or do you think it's because it looks a bit more intriguing? That who's he talking to? What's oh, going on? See, I don't know. But when I look on, I get a lot of people talking straight to camera. Mm -hmm. And um, and I watch them. So mm -hmm. maybe I'm the wrong person to answer this. But I think it's inherently more interesting for people if they go, oh, what's he talking? Who's he talking mm -hmm. to? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking in on it. You're being interviewed and kind of thing. So that's why I think it works so mm -hmm. well. And I see it on YouTube shorts as well. Mm -hmm. And um I don't know whether it's like a an Andrew Tate thing that's pioneered this mm -hmm. like he's not looking at camera. Get the big glasses. Talk like this. No, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Is he in? What? Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, what? Back, Is yeah. he back in? I didn't mm -hmm. know I heard he was out. He's not out, is he? No, he got out for a day or something. So I bet you'll never order pizza on a podcast in for you, Julia. Um, have you seen the reviews, by the way, of that? The, what, the pizza? The, the, that's right. So if you, you know how he, he was doing this whole uh, rant at Greta? Yes. And the back and forth. Mm. Well, in the video where he's doing the response video, these pizzas get delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? And that's what hooked yeah, them, yeah. Yeah. But if you go to the pizza companies um google reviews right um <laughs> <It> must be <laughs> the reviews are like um uh well so like um this is a steal you know um this is the best pizza well worth getting arrested for <laughs> yeah um can i get greta cheese on it <laughs> <laughs> and, and this Jerry's Pizza is like hundreds and hundreds of reviews that are kind of like puns yeah. for what's happened to Andrew Tate. <laughs> That's um, cool, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think it, we, there's a because of we we come from a religious divide. There's times where there's certain personalities, especially sports, who are from one side or the other. I don't even look. I don't even read the article. I just go. To the comments, the comments straight, straight away, straight away yeah. because th there's there's so much fantastic humour in Northern Ireland <laughs> in regards to that stuff, <laughs> and it's very similar, probably what you experienced with the Andrew Tate pizza thing. Um, straight into the comments, and honestly, I've 
sat and cried. <laughs> yeah. But that's what social media is. I, I say this to all our clients is that social media primarily is to entertain people. They're they're on it to entertain themselves. They're not on it to be sold to. They're not I'm, on it I'm, to learn. We're not on it with our full brain capacity either. No. no. It's like... You're standing it, in a queue in Tesco's. You're on the toilet probably. You're in the yeah. train. You're not driving. And yes, I'm sure we've all had it when you're in the toilet that way a bit longer. <laughs> and somebody would shout, Henry, are you on LinkedIn? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to be because when we when we um were in, in relationship with you guys early doors, it was it was a real hard slog to come up with content because you're mm. you want to post every single day. But mm. and but when you went home um that night, you were either like and share and comment and blah blah blah. And it became a real burden for my wife. <laughs> Where <laughs> says you on LinkedIn? Says I'm gonna. There's three people in our on our marriage, so I started to disappear to the toilet. My types were one thumb, so it's like these <laughs> single clicks. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But yeah, where yeah, you go? I mean, a lot of people take social media. Uh, business is an important and serious thing. Yeah, but a lot of people take themselves way too seriously. Yeah. On social media, um, you know, I I I don't have many spats on social media, and I try to avoid mm -hmm. spats because you never know where that's going to reemerge. And we have this like thing right now where people look for your past mm -hmm. comments oh, yeah. and past interactions. And the problem with that is that we can all out each other for mistakes we've made and stuff we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it works. So somebody finding something I said two years ago and then they they end up getting outed because of something they said two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's just like, we're, but I think one of the things that's really fun is when, you know, I had a nasty troll the other day <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought I'll turn it into something interesting. So mm -hmm. I did a post about it. I'd never name names because I was like, yeah, you never know what other people are going to do as a result of mm -hmm. that. And then you end up where, God forbid somebody gets beat up or something yeah. like that and you feel like responsible for it. Or, you know, I saw, I don't know whether you saw this, um, a couple in Plymouth, I don't know exactly what went on, but their business went under during COVID and there was like a pile on, mm -hmm. on social media. Stuff like that is kind of like not nice because you never know where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, one of the great things about when you get like a, a negative person, but maybe not a troll kind of thing, mm -hmm. not like really vicious, mm. but negative, is if you're nice to them, Vasco's a pro at this, by the way, nice to them and keep the conversation going, right? Their negativity is massively yeah. amping up your post. <laughs> yeah. And I think Vasco had one. I don't know how anybody can get some get a bee in the bonnet about vasco he's the most mm -hmm. he's the most easygoing guy you can you can ever meet right vasco. and he, he's watching this and he hasn't paid me right and this guy's calling him out for you know, whatever about posting and you know you shouldn't be posting so much and all this stuff and and vasco's being really nice in mm -hmm. the comments going for him and then some of the guy's own connections start to pile on him and say why are you being a dick basically mm -hmm. right and so then one of his customers kicks in and piles on and says, well, I think you should apologize. Mm -hmm. And he ends up so. apologizing in the oh, comments disaster. Be That's a troll. <laughs> because his customers started to pile on over yeah. his behavior. And Vasco's like, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Not I got joke. an extra 10,000 impressions yeah. out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he done nothing. <laughs> He's done nothing. Yeah. I, I, I just apologize. Some, someone said, made a comment about a video I'd done about three years back, maybe three and a half years ago because it was before COVID. And he says, all you done was got a load of quotes together and fired it into a video. I says, I'm sorry. That was it. And then the next day he says, he sent me a private message. He says, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't I didn't mean to come across like that. But I could have caught mm. something up mm. uh, and got something going with them. Um, I said, look, uh, um, absolutely apologize. And it, we've all done this. We've requoted something that someone hasn't hadn't tagged their their name, mm -hmm. and it ended up one guy came after me and said, "You should have at least give Dean Seddon the, the the credit." I agree. I I, I says, <laughs> I, I come back straight away. I says, "See, to be honest, 
I actually went and checked. There was five different people on the internet that this quote is actually attributed to you. Einstein's me. always one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. five people. Yeah. You know, Dean said and one said, you know, uh, and I, and they said, oh, you've caused me to take myself now. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. it's like the, it's what Vasco probably done. You just edit them with love. Love mm -hmm. wins. What's your policy on that though? Are you a lover? Or do you like to kind of like the He's fire a stir, yeah, yeah, a pot stir. Like I'll so if it comes for me, mm -hmm. I I'll if I've done something wrong or if I've stepped out of line, I'm not gonna kind of deny it or bounce it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if somebody's just taking pot shots, yeah, stir I'll, up. I'll kind of engage with them because I know that it will help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If they're like vitriol, I'll block them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the only difference I've had is I've had two competitors, right? Now, bear in mind, I employ a lot of young people, right? Mm -hmm. 20s, they're all learning. There is no university for how to be good at social media. Yeah. There is no qualification. Mm -hmm. You learn it. Yeah. So everybody's learning it, right? I've had two of my competitors with big followings pile on a member of staff mm -hmm. people in their 30s and 40s who kn should know better, should know better going after a 20 something mm -hmm. yeah. in the comments with such a big crowd and them getting absolutely hammered in the comments mm -hmm. and i think the the danger of social media is people wade into stuff and jump on bandwagons too easy mm -hmm. but the inverse of that is Sometimes people's comments don't make sense, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I read some of the comments I get, and some of them you can't tell, is that a compliment? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or an insult. Yeah. Like, you can't quite work it out. I don't know whether you've ever seen this. Like, oh, No, I, I have a couple of people have done that with me, and I've said, because are they having a dig at me? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. we always say write copy with angry eyes that mm -hmm. read it and read it from someone who's <laughs> angry because there's going to be someone online that's yeah. going to read it in an angry way. And and the problem is once somebody's angry, like if you and, and I find this really hard, particularly when you. Um, so I'll ask, well, how do you mean? Mm -hmm. If I think it's kind of like I'm not sure, or they could, how do you mean? I'll mm -hmm. get them to explain one because I get another comment. <laughs> <laughs> but two, I can second guess myself as yeah, uh, is that actually yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. negative right. or is Proposals. that just me reading it wrong? Mm -hmm. But the problem is if you just shoot shoot off and defend yourself, you actually provoke the other person who wasn't angry and they feel they need to defend themselves mm -hmm. and you actually create an enemy of somebody who was just giving a an a, a normal comment. It just mm. you read it wrong or they wrote That's it wrong. Right. I think I I done all those things in the early days of Facebook when it when it was like just fresh on the scene where people were earning their dirty dirty laundry and all their their problems were going out and like you learn those things very quickly and and you learn oh, not to you do them again. The pot a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. I used to enjoy actually stirring the pot <laughs> just to see what would happen. And but that that is one of the things, though, isn't it? I mean, polarization mm -hmm. is now a thing. Mm -hmm. Your Andrew Tates, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things, they polarize people into camps. Yeah. And it is a really, in fact, one of the people who came after one of our members of staff um, was all in that camp. Mm -hmm. And it was like, just give them a break. They're just trying to do their job. They're trying mm -hmm. to do a good mm -hmm. job. They're just, that's all they're trying to do. If they make mistakes, they make mistakes. That's life, right? Yeah. But Bill, the problem with polarization is it only ends one way. Whether it's you going on social media, calling people out or mm -hmm. uh, mocking things or whatever, it only ends one way. You look at Donald Trump, right? He got elected. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get. We're gonna get in so much trouble with this one. Right? He got elected by being brutally and polarizingly honest, honest yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Politicians, whether you agree with Donald Trump's politics or not, is irrelevant for this. I'm just talking about his campaigning style, marketing style, mm -hmm. right? So he's brutally honest about what he thinks, calls out other people, attacks people, makes jokes about other people. Some of them funny, some of them not. You've got to admit he has some pretty, he has had some good comebacks, right? Mm -hmm. But he polarizes people, so mm -hmm. he's got some diehard people who will back him no matter what he says or does. Mm -hmm. And that 
then you got some other people who absolutely hate him. Mm -hmm. And he got a lot of media attention. They reckon $2 billion worth of media attention for free because of him stirring up controversy yeah. and everybody going, oh, I've got to see this. Mm -hmm. Like what would we call it in a car crash? Rubbernecking. Yeah. 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 yeah? Loads of people rubbernecking at what he's doing and the media did it. And this is a tactic on social media to kind of create these kind of, and you see the pop, the comments and there's always the gif of somebody eating popcorn. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I love this. <laughs> but it only, only ends up one way. Yeah, yeah You true. end up banned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because you have to raise the game Until all the time the line. to keep yeah. people engaged. Because it's like, oh, yeah, that's not as good as the last one. Mm -hmm. So you that's always right. need something more controversial to say to keep you in the limelight until eventually you cross a line that gets you. And I know a couple of people who've gone that way and they don't exist on LinkedIn anymore. Yeah, or cool. they don't exist on... Um, well, anybody can get on Twitter now, but they don't exist on Facebook. They're gone mm -hmm. because they've crossed the line by pushing it, pushing it too far. So one of our clients has contacted us over the Christmas break while we were off, and he says, "See on all all social media content that we do, turn off, turn off content uh, on comments. I don't want anyone commenting." And we we know that this is not going to help his his outreach and yeah. his engagement so we we tried to talk him back into it and says like leave it on it's it's a really positive thing to to have this happening and because he was more kind of wary of what that's gonna look like for his mm. customers and for other people looking at the comments going up on his post he said no like just take it off and we we knew that like this this isn't going to help him it's that actually not going to help us market him either that Taking them off is going to be a bad thing. But what what would you do if a, if a client came to you and said, "Take all my comments off, disable everything, all the interactions, oh. just post your creative." You're basically you're basically saying, "I only want admirers, admirers. Mm -hmm. I don't want a discussion. Mm -hmm. I just want people to love me." Yeah. So, what you should do is treble your fee, right, and say we are going to make the most admirable high production quality everything's going to be hollywood standard to blow people away every single time because mm -hmm. that's the only way you're going to get it isn't it mm -hmm. because we all know no comments no amplification yeah mm -hmm. so you shut it off no amplification mm -hmm. so you're going to bounce along the bottom or your production quality goes through the roof mm -hmm. to compensate for the lack of comments oh, that's kind of where we're at where we're going the only thing that we can do now is boost posts, yeah. boost mm -hmm. posts on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can't boost posts on LinkedIn. On a company page, you can. Okay, I so we use his personal profile. So yeah. for for us, we we can't get him any more exposure anymore because the, it's basically going to have to re rely solely on on the the creative uh, that we produce. Creative, so and, yeah. and the fear of something going wrong or somebody saying something mm -hmm. is outweighing the potential basically the trade-off of something negative mm -hmm. versus all of this positive i mean the way to deal if if they're facing you know often it's it's competitive you see yeah, yeah, competitors with fake accounts yeah. and they come and troll you mm -hmm. they put negative stuff on it or all of that kind of stuff goes on or you end up with somebody on a little war path somebody has to do a collaboration with me right mm -hmm. and i was like Mm, I'm not sure that this is a good idea. You, you look a bit crazy for me. You've got mm. some weird views on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I just said, oh, I don't really do collaborations like that mm -hmm. to kind of politely say but no. Off, yeah. And he was like coming for me, commenting on everything I was doing. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to let you uh -huh. and I'm just going to be really nice back. Yeah. And comments are content too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So people see how you reply to comments and make a judge of who is the nice person, mm -hmm. who is the bad guy. They can judge for themselves. They're not stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're doing is madness, basically. Yeah. Uh, but it's coming from a mindset of this could destroy me. Yeah, their image. But actually shutting it down is, is going to harm them more than that harm. person. And the sad thing was just prior to Christmas, we actually had a conversation because we always have a, a strategy 
forward looking strategy with these guys and they said look we're looking forward to 23 mm -hmm. because the level of content and exposure we have given them to that mm -hmm. time was foundational for where they were actually going and they were growing and employing as a, a company and then yeah this it's one, attracted the wrong it, wrong eyes yeah uh, um it's somewhat internal stuff and now that they want things turned off and, and and this is probably where we actually chatted about this earlier on in regards to the education because mm -hmm. you, you would say this um, on a regular basis. It's like we've got this amazing set of, say, graphics set up for someone, and they've got this great bit body of comp, uh, content written out for them, and they're stuck on one line. Mm -hmm. And they go, don't post. Yeah. And we're mm -hmm. going, it, it doesn't, it's not negative. It's because it's control, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, once you get onto social media, it is out of your control. You put a, an advert in a magazine, you mm -hmm. can control it exactly. It's going to go there. You get your message in front of you. If people see it, they see it. If they don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. Social media, you have no control. People can add to the discussion. Mm -hmm. And it's that control of, well, it's got to be just perfect. It's got to be just perfect. Yeah. And and But it gets back to what we were talking about earlier on about the, that, the, the, the not so good co content where we've got the mixture of the corporate stuff that we would do and, and the authentic is our what our clients would do. And I'm looking, I'm reading this and going, this is not in any shape or form negative, controversial. They're just stuck on one line. I'm mm -hmm. going, get the thing out. Yeah. yeah. Get the thing out and stop being anal about this one line, which actually means nothing to anything other mm -hmm. than you just don't like that it's one line. imperfect action. Yeah. yeah. And everybody wants perfect action. Yeah. And the problem is, Unless you have a huge team, you cannot take huge team, huge budget. Yeah. You cannot take perfect action every time. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, if you pontificate over one social media post, if you spend any longer than an hour debating it, mm -hmm. I mean, how much is that costing? How much is that one yeah. post costing? Mm -hmm. If you're sat there arguing over a word, it's just nuts. It's nuts. Another guy, we uh, this guy, we actually came. You had this guy on for eighteen months. And the war in Ukraine actually came. He went away to France, come back, and um, he went, oh, I, I need to stop posting. We actually started working with him. We'd done a video. And I, for me, it was a, a family-run business, fantastic business. The guy structured, business brilliant, done this whole take from starting the business out, family out, giving leaflets out. It was uh, bring tear to a glass eye. And he phoned me, and he says, and I, I'm knocked over. This is absolutely amazing. This was two o'clock, and one Friday afternoon. Said, right, well, let's get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he sent it to his parents, and he phoned me at ten to five. Said, so I'm going to take that post down. Why? You, you told me you were crying at the kitchen table about the journey of wife with your daughter who now mm -hmm. works for you. Blah blah blah, and blah blah blah. He says, "Ask me why." He says, my mum said I, I looked nervous. <laughs> yeah, that was enough for him to take that down was enough. the post. Oh. Cancel a series of videos that we had shot with him that day as no, well. Yeah. The, 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 the good thing in the story, he came back and apologised yeah. a month later when I got it out. My mum had to sit down and say, nearly said his name. I, no, <laughs> you, he says, no, I know I was wrong. He says, I, I, I was new to the game. I overthought it. I pontificated, as you said, mm -hmm. about this one thing. And it was all about hand movement. And I I, 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 I says, you have to come back to what you experienced when you watched the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how your audience would have looked at it the same way. Family yeah. run, started from a borrowed laptop, blah, blah, blah. He says, no, I see it now. And after that, the guy, no, the guy flew. Very, very so nice. I'll tell you a story. This is a Vasco story, but it's funny. We were creating a load of content for a consultant and, um, They'd been bouncing along the bottom on LinkedIn, 50 views and all this kind of stuff and no traction whatsoever. And we started writing the content, making it more human, simplifying mm -hmm. all that fun stuff that we do. And Vasco is the king of getting traction quickly on, on, mm -hmm. on accounts. He knows how to write news mm -hmm. copy and news posts and stuff to really like make something rock. And so what we said is, Given you've got a small account, you know, we know how 
when our thing, thing works, you've got to kind of get some traction to get more yeah. traction. So mm -hmm. one of the things Vasco will do is he'll, he'll say, let's curate some news out there, get people debating and talking with you. So when you put your promotional or business centric copy mm -hmm. the next day, you're going to carry a bit of that crowd and it'll make yeah. it a bit easier to get going. So Vasco starts putting into this. Oh, I like this new story. Great, Vasco. Let's get it out. So goes out. Vasco checks on it, see how it's doing. 10,000 views, nice. right? This oh, guy's got oh. like 700 connections, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like, Vasco, this guy's going to love you. Vasco goes back on to check mm -hmm. it a few hours later. The post's gone. Oh, yeah. uh, we've had that. We, yeah, oh, we, we've, we've had rat. that. We've he had deleted that. it. And Vasco says, why did you delete it? It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Wow. It's too much. Couldn't deal with the fame. And it's like, isn't this what you want? No, no, no. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> it's a nice complaint to have. But sometimes people's thought process like trips them up, doesn't it? It's like it's we we we're getting better at having this trust conversation with guys. You've seen our stuff. Yeah. You know what we're about. In fact, we actually have just taken a client on that was on with us a few years back. And um, they're back on. They, they wanted fun stuff. We done fun stuff. I don't like the fun stuff. We want corporate stuff. But you employed us to do the fun stuff. Yeah, but we really want the fun stuff. But you keep knocking it. You keep bouncing it, the fun stuff. Can you make it a wee bit more corporate? You don't want the fun stuff. No, no. Yes, I want the fun stuff. But make it corporate. What they want, Henry is they want the results of the fun stuff <laughs> with corporate. Well, yeah. that's what we're Yeah, we're trying, to, we're, we're trying to work it out. Years in, we're, we're learning that it's, now. That, uh, but on. they know what they want. They know that that's yeah. what's working. But then whenever they say it, they're, they're working on a huge, big projects and they want to retain that very corporate, corporate. Mm -hmm. trust us, mm -hmm. you're you're safe in our hands. <laughs> but we're not jumping around the office with kites and <laughs> no. dogs and things. No. It's, I use this where I was working with the startup and they had that same dilemma. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what you really want is you want a chocolate cake. <laughs> you want a chocolate cake, but the primary ingredient, you want it to be strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's and it, it. And it is that kind of like weirdness of, I want I want this, but I want that. We, we, we sat with a client a few years back and um, we said, Look, I really want to go a wacky video. Okay, you sure? Because you, this company had like 120 staff and blah, blah, blah. He says, yeah. So they sent us a storyboard. Mm -hmm. said, you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I don't want to do it. So that's okay. And we went down had an absolute fun day. Yeah. And the guy says, it's making us look like lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. And we had to pull it. Remember, we had to pull it. But remember, he says, no, I know. But here's me no, there's no buts. Mm -hmm. When you do this, do that, and do that, and you pull that together as one at it, mm -hmm. that's lunatic city. I told you this. He says, no, mm -hmm. no, you did. I says, look, there's a process. Oh, that it's always your fault. Just remember, right? <laughs> yeah, because they go yeah, and get maybe an audit done and the, uh, from another agency, and they'll come back and say, your content needs to be more fun. <laughs> the, the audit, yeah. any agency going up in to audit somebody else's a agency work is... Where can we find the shit stuff yeah. so we yeah. can call them out because that's our opportunity in, mm -hmm. basically. So it doesn't matter. Same with consultancy, right? It doesn't matter what great stuff you've done. Mm -hmm. Agency coming in will be looking for all the mistakes or the bits, that's the right. missed opportunities, because that's their opportunity to make money from the client. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people get this, that they look at, oh, hang on a minute, what's... And we've just had something like this. It's really funny. So we've been working with the company for about 18 months, right? Plodding away, doing the thing that we do, helping them get the content on LinkedIn, helping them get sales from LinkedIn, all of this stuff. It's been going great. Mm -hmm. PO comes to an end for the year, the contract for the year. Well, we've been reviewing it. The content impressions aren't where we want them to be. Our brand message didn't come through, all this kind of stuff. So we're not renewing for next year. I was like, what? And I showed you the message, right? Mm -hmm. Showed you the message. Uh, restructure. We're going to do things differently next year. It's at the time of recording here. It's the January the 5th. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Right. They ended on December the 31st. Mm -hmm. The PO for this year is already coming in because in five days they've seen it and they said, look, why are we tinkering with the content? Why are we doing all this stuff? We got 500 grand's worth of revenue from this thing last yeah. year and you're tinkering about co content impressions and tone of voice. Mm -hmm. There was 500 grand and it took us, don't get me wrong, it took us a while to get mm. them up to speed and working yeah. and functioning. But actually that audit review mm -hmm. that they did, all of the metrics they looked at were the things that they didn't, you know, brand voice and color schemes mm -hmm. and all color this stuff. Color schemes, we've had it. And then as they went through it, it was, hang on, where's the, where's the money? We're mm. killing this for money because that's what we want it to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I, it, it is a thing. Agencies coming in or anybody coming in, if you, you know, if you're a business owner and you're getting another agency to look at what another agency, mm. they are going to piss on the other agency. Definitely, that's just like yeah. guaranteed. Oh, yeah. well, we had again, a couple, again, it was probably about website odds are, are a good. Oh one. my yeah. goodness, man, it, 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 it's bad. But we had uh, we're, the client we were actually, they're actually an English company that we, we were representing. The, the guys who done their brand complained to the company about our content and demanded a meeting with us that we were ruining their brand. Yeah, because their tone of voice had changed brand. from uh, very kind of like formal to a bit more fun and they playful. Want us to and, and they flip the brand around a bit. Yeah. And, 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 I, and it was an HR person who called this meeting, by the way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember sitting there going, this is bonkers. I said, "What? Why are we having this meeting?" He says, "You're tinkering with our brand." I said, "It's not your brand; it's their brand." I said, "You're offended because we're we have a, we were asked on on a strategy to mm. work this model. Why are we here?" Mm -hmm. He says, "Well, I want to. I just wanted to share our concerns." Here's me. Thank you. Your concerns are noted. Can we all move on now, please? You know. I, I might upset Chris now being the creative here. I sometimes think that a lot of this brand work that happens effectively tells you what you can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. It becomes a prison. Yeah. yeah. Um, the amount of times, like tone of voice, right? Let's just be honest, right? It's so subjective. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right? What mood am I in? Yeah. What, what, how do I feel about it? <laughs> right? It's so flipping for, yeah. subjective. Mm -hmm. Like, we want a confident but witty tone. <laughs> okay. And and uh, what's the rules for that? Well, actually, there's no rules. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. confident and witty. Or we like to feel energetic in our words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So it's all subjective. Of course, there's, you know, some degree of like, if you go all monotonic and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But a lot of this stuff is just made up. It yeah. really is oh, just made up. I agree with that. Like, I've done branding for the last 27 years. And whenever it comes around to handing over a corporate ID, 50 to 80% of it is made up just because we yeah. feel we we'll have to. That to put in negative space usage, um, minimum font sizes. And we put all those things in just because we feel this is important, that this is what a client wants to see. And funny enough, we were talking to Vasco on the way down when he picked us up from the airport and he was telling us how, how unimportant stuff like that is really to the end client, that they don't really care about how thick their book is with their corporate ID or their strategy document no. at the end of it. If it's three inches thick, it's where you're bringing them after that and the journey mm. that you're bringing them on after that. And if you look at things like social media, right? You can have like color palettes, mm. where the logos are pieced a bit, font sizes, all this kind of stuff. The problem is everything looks the same. Yeah. Yeah. They do it because we want to project brand, Here's our brand, package, everybody yeah. sees it, it's yeah. consistent, all logical things. But then you get to social media and you go, why does everything look the same? Mm -hmm. And that's you right. think, oh, that's a good thing. No, no, mm -hmm. it's not. It's terrible it's not. because what happens is People think they've seen it before. Yeah, it's fatigue. It's, it is. Yeah. It is. And, and we've said, look, and this is probably where the education and the time of that conversation need to be brave. Let me say, how precious are you with the brand? Can we tinker and maybe reverse some of the mm -hmm. um, the, the colors or the palette colors mm -hmm. that, that you have that allows us? And you could hear the exorcist music going, oh, hey, oh, because <laughs> they're sitting looking at the guy and me. 
you have to be brave because, as Christopher said, after a month, people will go, oh, I love your content. Two months, they're going, yeah, it's really good. Three months, they're going, that's very same. Mm -hmm. No, we told you that mm -hmm. at the very start. People are going to get fatigued and thinking, you're putting up the same imagery. They're not. Because we have kept it so on brand, they see the same palette colors in the same way, yeah. with the same shapes, it's, with the same fonts. The very reason you do these brand documents actually becomes the problem mm -hmm. yeah, on becomes social the prison. media because it becomes <clears throat> it becomes so similar even though the image might be different there's a vibe you're giving off that i've seen this before yes mm -hmm. that's and, right and that can bite you in the butt well, yeah well it has and it's bit people in the butt and it's bit us in the butt and that's where we've really educated ourselves and saying look here's what's going to happen after six weeks you're going to look at that as much as I've we've changed the as much as I've changed the images, much as the guys have changed the images and some of the shapes and stuff. The corporate image is going to look mm -hmm. the same. I mean, I mean, if you've got a shareholders report and you know your environmental impact and your website, that's got to look consistent. Mm -hmm. But when it's social media and and you know bits like yeah. that, it needs to be a bit different. Mm -hmm. And I think for a marketer or a designer, even it's quite. It's quite hard to reconcile that because you want everything. It's it's natural to want everything to look and feel exactly the same, mm -hmm. but actually, it doesn't entertain or keep people. No, it, it definitely it definitely doesn't. And I think it, in, in light of what Chris Christopher's background now and more into the sort of media side, you have relaxed seventy eighty percent to yeah. what you. We all are precious. Mm -hmm. The first thing someone say, look, um, I, I like my logo. What do you think of my logo? Here's me. Are you precious about it? Mm. Do you want me to be honest about it? And they go, here's me. Joe, we've obviously redone our site mm -hmm. and we had this uh, roller coaster and I'm not sure how our graphic designers are still here because they, I would have quit having to work <laughs> with it because we went through this torture of like, how do we make all of this line up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had to come to the conclusion that we can't. Mm -hmm. So we had to go, well, hang on a minute. What is the absolute core bits, <laughs> the absolute yeah. minimum things that we can do or oh, has to be the same? So the proportions of the logo, yes. mm -hmm. the colors good. of the logo, things like that. And then we picked a color palette for some things, but we said we're not going to be bound by that because social media, like if you do a TikTok video mm -hmm. and somebody comes into work wearing blue and our color's pink, mm -hmm. yeah. are we not putting them on? Are we going to put them in a uniform? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's, <laughs> so we said, right, there's some just base minimum things, the logo, the colors of the logos, the fonts we use, and a little bit of our, not tonality, but things the way we would say things mm -hmm. and have like you know like the bowling alley just have like the the safety rails out yeah. but yeah. between that you can just bounce around bounce off yeah, because right. it's like if if we did a proper brand stuff on tiktok or something else mm -hmm. it, it just it just bomb it is i i think it's one of the things i probably appreciate christopher for remember the, the you don't know constantina what's it constantina Fold. Um, that wasn't. It was a post you done with a big fat fella on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and but it was completely creative three brand. Mm -hmm. But the, the humour in it was right through it because I took some stick over because I said, "Is that you?" Um, and but again, our personality was still rolled out, mm -hmm. but we still retained brand identity, mm -hmm. but still brought a humorous uh, feel to it. Mm -hmm. And and I think you have to be brave now. Mm -hmm. Because you will look the same, you will look mundane, and I think sometimes, especially from a business owners, they need to maybe go push the boundary a wee bit to mm -hmm. maybe come back and find that middle ground between mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. and a wee bit. Well, the majority of business owners that we work with are plus forty mm -hmm. years of age. They grew up like us without the internet. The internet didn't exist <coughs> whenever we were designing back in the nineties, and our constraints to build logos and build brochures and all that 
It was print, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Was, and print, print determined that everything looked identical and, and you, you could look at a business card and know it's the same company as yeah. what their signage would be. So we had all that and now that social medias came came around, those those rules can be broken up one hundred percent now whenever it comes to as long as you're not running away totally mm. and you're not making a, a mess of, of the brand, but um so many business owners that we meet who are like the plus forty group they're used to what they grew up with that mm. they were told that this is the, the way your your brand should be you should have a corporate identity you should hand that down to your marketing team and that needs rolled yeah. out across your rolled video out. and everything that you do needs to to match mm. and that doesn't exist anymore I, I don't think it exists i think even for ourselves and you may disagree chris is that even from ourselves our own perspective we're probably and you you can give a, a definitive sort of seven year or eight year thing that I think we are, as a company, coming to the point where we're looking to probably rebrand again at some point. Mm. Um, because what, what is it they say you should rebrand every what? Every uh, seven years. I every think seven it's faster years. now than that, though, isn't it? Oh. You know, so. Well, it's good for us. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, it probably is. It's been fast tracked. and But in many ways. Does this mean you're getting rid of those pictures on your wall? <laughs> no, they, no, no. There, 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 there is a memory <laughs> <laughs> with the We Creative Three stickers on it. Um, no, but we are probably coming to that point where we are probably like, and if anybody watching the podcast and maybe you've had the the same brand for twelve years, or maybe it is time for a refresh. Um, come to Maverick and Plymouth dot com. Um, but I seriously, th I think refreshing brand though, it's not just about logo and updates no. it actually injects new energy into a business mm, it does like that, i think that's one of the reasons why i do it, it like when we started to go through and said oh we got to, like the end of last year it was like all the vision the mission let's revisit it update it mm. and as we're going through the copy and tidying up the copy and tidying up the color schemes and all this kind of stuff and just making sure that we're we're set for the new year in new year new yeah. us kind of thing it injected a ton of energy into the team going, yeah, this is where we're going. This is what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And and all of that started with, let's tidy up this, let's tidy, tidy up, that. up that. And it's like, no, no, this is like a new us. A new us. That's right. But you know yourself, uh, if you look back to, well, even seven years, we're probably going back to mm -hmm. near enough when <laughs> Maverick started in many ways. But when you look at, we're in the 2023, we've come through a pandemic and i probably moving in. We're already in a, a recession. I think that energizes the the belief that the, the company is actually forward thinking. Mm -hmm. There is a, a refreshing of the look. People are a lot more invested in um, the the restructuring or the relaunch of, of a new brand. And in many ways, because we chatted about this before we, we went off, is that going into 2023, it is a time for us, and even as business owners and business leaders, is that, you know, we, you have to lead by example mm -hmm. in your posting, in your output, in your your, your, your way you're, commu you're, you're, you're communicating. And I think um, going into 2023, like, I know for us, we're probably looking towards maybe freshening stuff up purely and on the basis that people get used to that fatigue mm -hmm. of, say, our our greeny sort of website website or whatever and say like well we venture far well that's going to be down to probably more Christopher than than leading the, the design team but I think it brings a refreshing to the brand and I think it just ignites the wider team yeah looking yeah. forward to it yeah I think we all end up I'm not the same person I was two years ago I think that's where I was going it, 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 is that We've all evolved, and the people who, how long? How long is, is Jack here? How long's Jack been here? Have well, you said that dead loud? So Jack would hear. Shout out, oh. Jack. Three years. Three years. Yeah. Three years. Yeah. Is Jack a different person? Jack. Jack started actually. I have to remember where he started now. Jack, where did you start? Well, I've seen that. <laughs> Jack started in our print room because yeah. we have the printing part of the business as well. He was folding and creasing leaflets at the beginning. Mm -hmm. He's now driving all our media. Yeah. But he went on a journey from that. I always start like Jack's family member. 
So every family member has to start in the print room. <laughs> right? <laughs> right Why? Passage. Because a lot of the stuff in the print room is repetitive. Yeah. Mm. You have to do the same thing. I'm over sure you I'm sure you've had this. You started in print, right? Yeah. yeah. You, your Clean. folding machine breaks down yeah. and you have to manually fold, fold. leaflets yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it's a discipline mm -hmm. that you learn that you have to do something over and over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And it builds, it's character building, as I said. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I've done it. I did it. My 16 year old is doing it now. <clears throat> My 20 year old has done it. And Jack, um, Jack's, uh, the fiance is that the right word? Yeah, of my stepdaughter. Mm. He he's doing it. Too. He did it too. Mm. It's character building. It is. Yeah. Well, the, my dad. I remember him telling me a story that when he first started his very first job, they gave him a huge big block of metal and they said file that down to one inch, one inch, one inch, and he sat every single day just filing this piece mm. of metal. And he says it was the most hateful thing to do. It was a cool building and he'd done it and he failed it the whole way down. It took him about a month to fail this piece of metal. <laughs> and I thought there's a, there's like, there's well, we, we don't do that anymore. Like no. apprentices come in no. and it's all about what makes them feel good and, and what give, give, gives them the best value from the, the day. But I think there's something massive in that. Actually. I have a friend. He lives in Plymouth and he he runs a finance financial advisory firm quite a big firm in the southwest one of the biggest in the southwest and i was when i first met him um you know you you chat in business and stuff like that and then we we went to a party i think it was at a f what i thought was a friend of his house and we went to this party and i was chatting to the friend of his and it turns out that his friend used to own the firm mm-hmm so I was like, I'm not saying names because I don't know whether this story, mm. how widely known is this story. And I was like, how did that happen? He owns the firm now and you you used to own the firm. Mm. So when my my mate was um, in his early teens, he was in, you know, humble beginning, shall we say. And he was looking for a little job. And his friend who owned the firm back then gave him a job mm -hmm. even though he wasn't qualified mm -hmm. he was he was straight out of school kind of thing and for the first i want to get this right for the first two years he paid him to read business books mm -hmm. napoleon hill um all of these you yeah. know great big uh, mm -hmm. books that you you hear of and he paid him to read the read books them. and now he owns the firm that's yeah. amazing he bought him out and took over the firm that's amazing and it's like there's something that happens to us where we have to have that level of consistency, consistency. that level of knowledge where we, we level up yeah. and we keep leveling up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's for me is going to be the biggest challenge is it's not what's 2023 going to bring. It's, am I leveling up ready for 2023? Mm -hmm. No doubt. And, and I think a lot of that is down to what goes into your brain by way of your reading material and who you associate mm -hmm. yourself with. I know for us, look, if we went home in the plane now, we're already inspired and encouraged and ready to go, purely on the basis that um, of the, our, our time spent together. And I think throughout the year, because we, we're actually talking about having a presence now back in Belfast um, for where we, we started, because the, the time is right for to be around movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. And because... There's a, an old book many years ago that iron sharpens iron because mm -hmm. each man sharpens another. And I think when you're around people, you attract who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're authentic, you'll attract authentic people. If you're mm -hmm. a given person, you'll, you'll attract a given person. If you're a generous person, you'll be around generous people. And with that comes the, the sharpening of the blade. We're here in um, Maverick's um, studio and we're in a bigger firm and we're empowered and being shaped and we're going out stronger more focused people and that's the reality of 2023 because what will tend to happen is like the guys because we're talking about earlier on where people will drop off now's the time not just to be aggressive because that could be a buzz term it's being around people who are going to shape mm. the next because you're going to you're going to need a can-do mentality mm -hmm. 
There's no doubt about it. You're going to have your down days. That's a fact. You're going to fall right into your face. You're going to run into many walls. You're going to f fall over a, a number of hurdles. It's how you get up with the mindset that's going to determine how you're going to run through the next hurdle. And the more people you're around with a can-do mentality, you're going to add value to you. You're going to add value to them. There's going to be massive opportunities in 2023. And it's when you're around, getting up, dust yourself off, and you go again. Mm -hmm. So I've got some bad news. Vasco's signaling to me that it's nearly time for dinner. So we have to wrap up. Okay. Um, guys, I'm shocked I'm not <laughs> <here with us. laughs> to we got to wrap up because Vasco's starving. Um, <laughs> Is that your stomach? I can hear rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, guys, it's been awesome to have you in person oh, it's blessed. been awesome to have you on the podcast mm -hmm. yep. i'm looking forward to what jack's going to do with this we'll see how well <laughs> he's progressed from jack. the print room once um, you can add it up from that jack's gonna be impressive <laughs> this is going to be hollywood <laughs> if we if we hear you swearing over the next day or so we'll know what's all to do with edits to this podcast so uh, guys thank you for joining us today uh, thank you for uh, uh tuning in to watch our ramblings I'm going to put, we're going to put your socials and everything uh, on the YouTube link and all that kind of stuff. But um, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Really, really Cheers. do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, just on behalf of Creative 3, it's been a, an absolute joy to be back here for where it all started. Mm. And congratulations to you and the team. Yeah. Uh, to Louise, Vasco, um, Derry, Jack, and all the guys who have fought the fight. And congratulations, guys, seriously. Yeah. Well done.